years ago we were in May. Thank you.
fearing that Japanese Americans would be loyal to the Empire of Japan and turn on America, the United States government sent all persons of one-eighth Japanese ancestry to detention camps. A total of 190 Alaskan Japanese Americans were sent to Idaho. The Kamara family from Anchorage was sent there, and the Tanaka family of Juneau was split, with the father going to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Many times the men were taken first. The rest of the family went to Camp Minidoka in Idaho. These attorneys were housed in small rooms with a pot-bellied stove. Meanwhile, other Japanese Americans joined the 100th or 42nd Regimental Combat Team, the Gopher Broke Battalion in the European Theater of Operations. This unit had the highest casualty rate and was awarded the most medals of any unit in World War II. They were also known by the soldiers as the Purple Heart Battalion, as almost 100% of the Union had at least one medal given for combat wounds. Meanwhile, in the Aleutians, the U.S. Navy is actively patrolling the area. The Imperial Japanese Navy cannot get supplies to the Japanese forces on Atu and Kiska, except by submarine. Then that door also slams closed. A message was sent to the troops on Atu and Kiska that they were to hang on as long as possible and thank them their dedication and service to the Emperor.
Major Marvin Muncock Marshall, who trained the Eskimos as scouts, as they would know if anything was amiss in their territory. Marston taught them to drill and identify enemy and friendly aircraft and ships, then report that information to their units. Each ATG member was given a 1917 Enfield 30-06 rifle, two boxes of cartridges, and two blue and gold ATG badges to wear on their civilian coach carcass. Initially, both men and women were recruited, and Laura Wright, the creator of the gorgeous Laura Wright Parkies, was the best shot of all 6,600 of the Eskimo Scouts. Leave it to a woman. <laughs> Only a few women are listed on the rolls of this unit, which became known as Uncle Sam's Men. After disbanding in 1947, the Eskimo Scouts lived on through the scout units of the Alaska Army National Guard. The United States had slowly started a buildup of the Alaska Defense Command under General Simon Bolivar Buckner. A strong personality and an advocate for the strategic importance of Alaska, he diverted aircraft headed for other theaters. The Alaska Scouts were formed as a combat intelligence platoon, and they had been to every one of the Aleutian Islands to see where the Japanese were, their strength and equipment, and any other combat intelligence that they could gather all this without ever leaving a trace they had been there. These non-traditional army outdoorsmen were trappers, big game guides, prospectors, commercial fishermen, and many of them were Alaska natives. Colonel Lawrence B. Kastner trained them in the commando role. They also served as trainers for the regular army and as cartographers and surveyors. The Alaska scouts were a scrummy, often dirty, and were attired in tin canvas pants and flannel shirts with shoe bags or lump lucks depending on the season. The regular army was a gas hammer, and the press dubbed them Castor's Cutthroats, but the men themselves went to prefer the name Alaska Scouts. These commandos were deposited on shorelines by submarine, riverboat, or fishing crawler. The United States feared that the Japanese were going to march up the Aleutian chain invade mainland Alaska, and then establish air bases to bomb the Boeing Works in Seattle and the shipyard of Herman Washington. Great idea from the Japanese viewpoint, but they lacked the resources to do so. After the war, we found in their archives that their plan had been to draw our forces, as we suspected, but also to protect the southern approaches to their home islands from naval ships, and to have boarding stations against the U.S. bombers. Would you please, please bring the lights up so that they can read about this next song that rains, please? Next song, next song. Next song, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, now we need to bring the lights up, please. <laughs>
World War II was ended by dropping two atomic bombs. And a much different world emerged from that chaos. But charity was shown too. The victorious allies harnessed atomic power for the good. They rebuilt people's lives, their nations, and their infrastructure. We all grew as a people due to this crucible of war. We learned to be more tolerant and how to use shared experiences to live together. Remember, it's the small things that we differ in, but we all share the same humanity. We Alaskans are blessed with a diversity of cultures and languages, all looking and working together toward a better future for all of us, regardless of our backgrounds. Today, we are all Alaskans, reveling in the natural beauty and grandeur of our mountains, our rivers, and more.
state's flag, we gather here to honor our veterans, to learn from our history, to build a better future, where acceptance, respect, and honor thrive as it is passed on from one generation to the next.
drive, the joy that she has, and she has led this group for many, many, many years, and um, I think we've burned her out a little bit. So she's going to take a bit of a break, but we would like to show our We would also like to thank Janet, who just noodles when we need her to noodle and just plays a little song. It's great.